Come out quietly. Come out quietly but quickly. Come out now. Slowly. There's more than ten of them. They're peeping. Making little baby peeping noises. Well, my first video of the day. I, we were in town. I took my mom out to uh, lunch. And it's 4.30 in the afternoon. We just got back. Pulled out my camera and there were turkeys out here. Right behind the cab cabin. In town, well actually I should say up in um, Mackinac yesterday, I got this United Cutlery Bushmaster survival knife. Um, United Cutlery is a poor man's survival knife company. So if you're not into poor man's survival knives, then ignore this and move on. Because this is a poor man's survival knife. Um, I got it just to check it out and review. And I was surprised because I saw the knife, which is thick. I like thick knives. It's pretty heavy. And it's um, made in Taiwan, which... Right, can I focus on that? Anyway, it's stainless steel made in Taiwan, which is a surprise in itself in these days of uh, Chinese-made stuff. So that impressed me. I didn't know much about United Cutlery, but I looked it up later. But, um, anyway. The, uh, sheath has a animal snare. Stainless steel, heavy, heavy duty spring stainless steel. I haven't figured out how to use it yet because there was no instructions, but this is a really thick stainless steel braided rope for animal snare. Has a sharpening stone and a flashlight, which is a cheap piece of garbage, and I will replace with a better one. Now, what I did like is a snake bite kit. This includes um, some rubber suction cups, a sterile scalpel, and some antiseptic and sterilized sterilization um, little vial of stuff to clean the scalpel and the um, wounded area before in in cutting the incision. It's got an instruction kit. Very nice. I looked it over. That impressed me very much because uh, I actually don't have any snake bite kits yet. I was going to get one, and there is it one already. And it has a military style can opener, which I've seen goes for as much as four dollars, but I've got a bunch of these from the army. Well, anyway, and I thought that was cool. And I was already going to buy the knife, and then I realized it's a old school rambled style. I noticed the compass, and then now I don't have my tripod with me, so I'm going to have to hold on a second and open this up. And the handle is this little survival kit. There's a scalpel, there's some band aids, there's some sewing needles, fishing line, two fish hooks, two little sinkers, some waterproof matches, and a striker all closed up in this little wrapper. Um, the vial itself has Morse code written on it outside and it also has a magnifying glass which I'm going to try to start a fire with later on. It looks pretty cheap like garbage but we'll see. Anyway, um, this is a cheap poor man's survival knife. I know a lot of people don't like the Rambo style knives but I was reading 
the Backwoodsman's Magazine a couple days ago, actually, funny enough, and read that the hollow handled knife has a long history dating back to the turn of the century. And although now, recently, since the Rambo series, there's been some cheap knockoffs made, the original hollow handled knives were designed to carry I think the original one was a special order intended to carry some um, some matches and fire starting equipment in the handle to keep it waterproof for survival and uh, then of course Rambo came along and came all these knockoffs and cheap knives so I do like the snake bite kit and the snare is pretty impressive. Uh, the survival kit could have a lot added to it. The case is pretty cheap, but you can add a lot more gear in the pockets. There's a lot of room in the pockets for extra gear. So I might add on to this just for fun one day. Get rid of the cheap junk flashlight. I am not impressed with that. And it's an incandescent bulb anyway. So I'll get a dollar store. Some of the dollar store flashlights are nice these days with the aluminum body and the super bright LEDs. But so that's gonna go. But the other stuff can stay, and I'll just add to it. So I'm gonna go around and see. Oh, by the way, the um, the finger guard comes off. This again, it's awkward one-handed. I'm out here up at the cabin, but this guard comes off. It's detachable. Uh, I sort of like it because I'm going to start chopping around on some trees out here in a few minutes and uh, see what this blade can do. Now, I'm not impressed with the saw because it's a one way. Oh, and it's got a um, navigation thing here on the, uh, on the knife. Add it in. So I thought I'd show you that. I, that's just the. Like I said, the United Cutlery Poor Man's Survival Knife, which is a step up from the one I showed previously, which was the Harbor Freight one. Although the Harbor Freight has a very good um, blade in the handle, it's very well done. The only weak point maybe here is the tang goes in about to here, but this little rivet is not the greatest. So. Although the, the blade goes in pretty deep, it's not attached really well. But I think you could put a bolt through there and improve that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if uh, see what happens. I'm going to put it through a little bit of a workout here today. I'm just playing around. And first off, though, while the sun is finally shining, I want to see if I can get a fire started with this little magnifier. As I feared, you couldn't get a fire started with this if your life depended on it. I don't know why they put that in there, honestly. Because um, it's the cheapest part of the whole thing. Is this magnifier is a disgusting piece of garbage. I feel warm on my finger when I hold it on. I actually held it onto my finger. But you can see the focal point doesn't get small enough. This lens is such junk. Look at the uh, pattern it makes on the wood. You can see all the swirls in the plastic that it makes. The patterns of the sun's rays. It's garbage. It's such garbage it cannot focus the sun's heat. No, I just lopped this into the board. And it went goes in like butter. Nice and smooth and easy. It's a good heavy handled knife goes in really nice and easy so and look I just cracked that wood look at that not bad at all I mean seriously um, <laughs> actually I think I might chop down a small tree just for fun see what this thing can do let's say I'm lost in the forest and this knife is the only thing I've got I gotta make a shelter so let me see Sorry, I only got this, uh, my hand here, but I'm going to try to make myself a shelter. Oh, not bad, actually. 
I mean, the cuts. It's not bad at all. Look at that, one chop. Right there. Oops, had a lancing blow. That's nice, it cuts. I want to fell this tree and uh, so I can use it for construction materials. So I gotta put the camera down. Well, except that it hit another tree. It's quite a good knife. Really wish I had another person here. But in a survival situation, you won't. Look at that. Uh, feels good. I gotta keep tightening the uh, thing on the back. That would have to be taken care of where you take off the hand guard. The hand guard wobbles it loose a bit. But this is a good rugged chopping knife. Chops nice. Look at that. Just a little slap. It's, it's sharp. I mean it cuts. Look at that. Almost halfway through in one sweep. Not bad. That's one cut. It's heavy. Let's see how well the blade holds up to some hacking out here. I don't like this hand grip being here for chopping. It does hurt. That's got to come off. I'm going to do that in a minute here. It's not a well balanced knife. There's no weight in the handle. All the weight is up at the top. So I'm not impressed too much with that. Um, let me keep chopping a bit here and see what happens. Sure wish I could show you this. Most of these chops are one sweep. I've cut that piece off. But it's really hard to do and show you. Really awkward to do while I'm recording. but it does not hold its sharpness. It's cheap metal. That's a fact. But it could save your life. Just wouldn't want it to save your life too many times. Uh, you'll have to sharpen it every day. It's about five minutes of work. Uh, it cuts. That's just using the knife edge. It cuts. It chops. It's a heavy edge, heavy blade. The, um, can't do this one handed. The, uh, blade is loosened up inside here a bit, as I had thought. The, um, where it goes in is just a little piece of metal pressed through. It could use some reinforcing. But, I'm gonna try this out a little bit, see what it can do. Put it through the works a little bit today. And who knows? I might add it to my kit if it does any good. I don't know what this is supposed to be on the back, but it's not a saw. Definitely, it is not a saw. I don't know what that's for. Fish scale or what, but it's definitely not a saw. But I like the heaviness of that blade. For sure. I mean, again, um, it's not going to hold its sharpness. I've already dulled it a little bit with this chopping. But if you use it like you would an axe, it's going to do a job for you. Um, I did. It's not hard metal. I trashed the, uh, the blade a little bit. It's not going to be a good survival cutter. I think it'll last you a little while until you can afford to get a better one. I think I would treat this as like an axe with a survival kit. Um, it wouldn't be my number one choice at all by any means for real life survival. But for little outings and short trips, if you're out on a fishing expedition, and uh, you might have to survive a couple days in case you get lost or something. This would be cool. 
Long term survival? No. Forget it. It's not going to hold up long term. But if you're just kicking around in the forest and you want a cheap poor man's survival knife for vacations, getaways, and outings, I think it'll be alright. I definitely think it could save your life cutting down some trees, building a shelter, starting a fire. Definitely that. Saw? Useless. I don't know what that is supposed to be, but it does not cut anything. No idea what that's supposed to be. If you do ever get something like this, I would strongly advise carrying another knife for fine work and something like this for rough hacking and slashing work. Because once you've done some slashing with this, it is not going to do any fine work. Here's the babies. For some reason the babies got separated from the mother. And the mother is calling them. And I can hear a bunch of turkeys coming through the forest yet. Now these birds are only 15, 20 feet away from me. The babies are not very Scared. Not at all. Oh, there's a big one. There's a big... This is a lot of turkeys. This is five minutes after the first bunch. They're just walking along next to me. They're just walking down the road in front of me. That's a big bird. No baby turkeys. Different ages. the forest behind him. Pine trees and most evergreens are valuable survival food. And pine trees are packed with vitamin C. I like to just eat them.
right off the plant. I think they're very nice. If you get certain varieties of kind, they're pretty good tasting and actually not bad to eat. They're soft. And you can chew them up pretty well. And actually, pretty much the whole pine tree is edible. What's palatable best and the easiest is the inner tree bark. And there's stories that the native Indians would strip whole acres of, I forgot where area this was, so don't hold me to it, but they would strip whole acres of pine tree for their inner bark. And it's often seen as a emergency survival food, which I'm going to go out into the forest and try in a little while here. I don't want to kill a tree, so I'm going to find a thick branch because I just don't want to waste the pine trees were devastated in the um, in the tornadoes here a long time ago. So I'm going to go out and find a tall pine and strip the inner bark off one of the larger branches. But anyway, the evergreens in the pine family are edible and a very good source of food. Here is a pine tree and I'm going to take a branch off of it. I probably cannot record this because it's just awkward getting in here even at all. But I'm going to use my new survival knife and um, chop this tree to branch down and take it up into the cabin and um, eat the inner tree bark. This is an awkward angle. I don't know if you can see that, but this knife is not bad. If I can get the branch angle right. So I better put this down so I can even cut at all. Oh, smells nice. Dinner is served. So you can peel the bark off the pine tree. It comes off very nice. And it's the sticky inner bark that's edible. Wish I had my tripod. But I'm going to peel off the bark in layers here and eat it. Actually, I took this piece off. It's very sweet to suck on. It's a very nice sweet treat. I'm surprised. Mmm. You can scrape some off with your teeth. The Indians lived off this stuff sometimes. And I'm Although you don't want to eat the wood itself. That's good. So now I'm going to try to separate this bark in its layers. Now, normally you'd use a, the tree, large tree trunks. But I don't want to kill a tree, so I'm using just a branch. Here I've got a piece started. It's peeling off nicely. Look at how soft it is. It's soft and stringy and flexible. That is food. Now a lot of people fry it. I guess you can eat it plain. I'm going to try it. Yeah. It's um sweet, but it's like rubber. It feels just like a rubber band in my mouth. A lot of people fry them in a pan or roast them like potatoes. But at, it's just like a rubber band in my mouth. Hmm. I think I'll have to try frying some of these later. But if it came between dying or um eating pine, I guess you could survive. Um, it's sweet. Not bad at all. It's a little bit 
medicine -y. Hope my focus is okay. It's very awkward out here and uh, doing this with my hands. But anyway, I think it's probably better fried because um, from what I've heard, it would be just like potato chips. But, there's survival food. So now I've used this to hack up some wood for a shelter. Procure some food, wild edible. And, um, it's still alright. It could handle a couple more days of abuse like that, but the only thing I got to complain about is the blade is wobbling side to side a little bit in here after all that hacking work. But it's still pretty solid. And um, I'm going to continue doing some survival stuff with it. Put it through the test. See what it can do. Turtles seem to like people and they keep coming up and checking us out. Oh, now that that one. There he comes up. He's going to say hi. There he is. Just coming up to say hi. I'm surprised. This is so weird. The animals out here have no fear of people, they're actually curious. Oh, now he's going to go away. Wait a minute. He's so curious. Look at him coming. That turtle was like just two feet from my dad. And then I turned on the camera and it scared him away a little bit. That's weird to see how friendly they are and curious. Well, my uh, bottom line results with this knife after using it for a day of playing around and chopping down some trees and eating some wild edibles, <laughs> eating trees. If you want to use this knife for long-term survival, don't get it. But if you want it as a uh, camping standby or something to carry around on fishing trips, uh, something to get you through an emergency, it'll work. A poor man's cheap survival knife, it'll do the job. I've been hacking and chopping with it, and uh, it's still okay, but you will be sharpening it every night if you'd wanted to take this on any long term survival trip. This is not a $300 survival knife, but honestly, I would not be chopping and slashing with a $300 survival knife. I'll give my personal opinion. If I had an expensive survival knife, I'd probably be babying it and not abusing it like I would with this cheap one. So, I'm going to keep this in my survival kit as a good hack and slashing knife. Um, yesterday in Mackinac City, I found some really nice products. This is Hillbilly Bubble Bath. Cook this and eat 30 minutes before bathing, and you've got yourself a bubble bath. thought that was nice. I'm going to add that to my uh, survival kit. And the Roadkill Cafe menu, featuring some of our local favorites. This is uh, definitely going to be kept in my, my camper. See, we have, have here some canine cuisine. You'll eat like a hog when you taste our dog. Got a slab of lab, good price too, $2.95. Puppy pot pie. Guess that mess, a daily special treat. If you can guess what it is, you eat for free. 
We got here center line bovine. Tastes real good straight from the hood. Give you an idea of some of the menu options here. So next time anybody comes out to the uh, off-grid camper, you'll be sure to have some good food. Hi, this is Troy from the Off-Grid Project. I had to find a spot where there's no wind. Um, one thing about this area is very windy. And it would be awesome for wind power. This is the most amazing. There's always wind here all day, almost every day. And uh, pretty much all night. Just like to say, I, I've been reading comments. I get a lot of information from people. I want to thank you for the comments. All the help, advice, and suggestions. Thank you very much.